Here lies the twist. The very strength of the radar network, the ability to gather clean data quickly, became its undoing. By trusting that precision, the operators faced an enemy that didn't fight the radar signals but turned them into weapons of confusion. Digital radio frequency memory transformed the immune shield into a liability, overwhelming it with believable lies instead of brute force static. For the pilots waiting miles away, the signals told another story. Warning indicators that showed enemy radars tracking them began blinking in erratic patterns, losing lock or shifting to phantom targets. Silence filled their headsets as fire control threats dropped away. The strike window had opened, and in those few stolen minutes, the path toward the target ridge became clear. In the cockpit, every blink on the threat display carried weight. Pilots trained to trust instruments more than instincts. Yet in moments like this, instincts pressed against discipline. The eerie silence wasn't comfort. It was tension. A radar gone quiet could mean deception just as much as relief. Some gripped throttles tighter. Others checked altimeter readouts again, reminding themselves of the altitude buffer that separated them from the lethal ring of surface-to-air missiles below. Why risk eight 5,000-pound bunker busters on one ridge. Because that ridge wasn't just rock, it was a vault. Beneath it, an underground complex stretched deep into the bedrock, a network Hezbollah had carved out over half a year of tunneling. Reinforced galleries connected by narrow passages, multiple disguised entrances, and concrete arch ceilings all worked together to turn the area into a fortress. It wasn't just storage space. It housed missile parts, weapons stockpiles, and a small assembly line, all hidden under tons of stone that satellites couldn't see through. Taking out the surface alone, would achieve nothing. The target had to be crushed from the inside. 